Safe, happy and creative, stay home and craft, stay happy and creative in fact. My name is Barbara Gray from Clarity here in the UK and we're on the bus number 306, that's 306 hours friends that we've been together now, all recorded on YouTube if you want to catch up. And today is the second part of a really nice doodle that we embarked on last week. So today we're going to um, finish that up. Last week, if you recall, we designed our art and we penciled our art. And then today we're going to ink and shade. And I've got a couple of tricks up my sleeve to show you. So I hope that you're with me. Let's just check. Paul is in the building with us. So I'm hoping, what does this say? Oh, I hate it when it does that. <laughs> Good morning, anyway. Come on in. Annette, good. I only need to see one name. Good morning, Annette. And then I know that I'm not alone. So while our friends are looking for us and joining us on Facebook Live and on YouTube, um, let's settle in and have a little catch up. Have you got your tea? Have you got your coffee? What are you drinking? Hmm? What's your tipple? I like tea personally. Here they come. Good to have your company, ladies and gentlemen. Where's Ken? You must be there somewhere. Beverly, good morning, Bev. We saw each other at um, Heaver Castle on Saturday, didn't we, Beverly? Yeah, that was nice to catch up with you and the family. Um, what a fabulous day we had at Heaver Castle. It was quite something. Um, yeah, it was lovely. What a beautiful sunny day and what a location for an art show. It was a craft in art in focus, actually. Art in focus, I think it was. Four day art show at Hever Castle. We got tickets for Saturday. It's packed, really busy. What beautiful art, though. Top end, like high end stuff, you know. No toot there. I didn't see any toot. No, I think they're vetted from what I, from what I gathered. It's very discerning. Real, real talented, talented ceramicists and jewellers and woodworkers and uh, printmakers. Yeah, it was quite something. Yeah, so so that was fun. Nice to do something different. What did you do? Anything special? DJ Rowable. Hey, Dave. Are you watching? He's checking the wife. He's checking the wife out. <laughs> morning Dave um yeah so Saturday was great and I felt inspired when I got home and so I've spent the, the rest of the weekend doing pottery <laughs> but I should tell you more about that let's get started we've got quite a few in the building already and so it's nearly 10 o'clock and then we'll get going um, there are less of us now in here, but still, we pack a crowd. Look, 93 people according to my screen. You know, that's loads. I mean, at the height of the pandemic, there were 500 of us. 500 of us. But it's not about the numbers, is it? It's not about the numbers. It's about who's here. You know, who's here? We are. The important people are here. And then there are millions that don't even know about us. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So let's have a look. Good. Good morning. Come on in. Where's Pat? Pat Hoskins. Are you there? Checking, checking, checking. Hey. Nice to see you all. And what's the weather like where you are? Hmm? It's a little overcast here. Not as sunny as they forecast, but the summer is a coming, isn't it? Dave, just having a coffee. Yeah, good. You need to stop every now and again, Dave. I got into a bit of a, a panic this morning when I looked at the week ahead. <clears throat> and then I thought, let's just do today, today. Let's just do today, today. I'll worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> so I got into a bit of a spiral. And then I thought, hang on a minute. Thank goodness we've got the shack this morning because that that really that calms me down. It slows me down and it calms me down because the last thing I want to do is sit here spinning like a top, like a blooming washing machine in spin cycle. That's not going to help you, friends, is it? <laughs> so 
breathe. I have to calm down, right? I have to calm down to get my ducks in a row to do the shag. Mission accomplished. There you go. There you go. So it's already worked because I had to I had to prep ahead. <laughs> All the stuff from the last TV show is still in the boxes, getting ready to be unpacked. So I've got to unpack it before I unpack it again for Thursday and Friday. It's all right though. At the moment, we're in the shack. Right. And the reason I was a little bit late is because I couldn't find this little fella. And without this little fella, I can't click start. <laughs> Not to worry. Cheers. Good health. Drink tea. Calm down and drink tea, eh? It'll all be all right. Health is good. That's the main thing. Health is good. I went to the doctors last week because I had chest pains. So I went to the doctors because I thought, oh, you know, is it coming back? Everyone says, listen to your body. Well, I'm listening. It aches. Um, so she had a look. <clears throat> she scheduled another um, x-ray. But she said when she listened, she said there's no infection there. It's fine. It's probably just the scar tissue from what happened in January. And immediately I felt better. Isn't it funny how the mind can take you to the disaster zone, you know, where is actually no disaster. I started worrying about stuff that actually wasn't there. I think we, we do a lot of that, don't we, girls and boys? Yeah, so, so as soon as the doctor said, everything's fine, but just to allay your fears, Barbara, I'll schedule another x-ray for you, a chest x-ray. I felt better instantly like that. And uh, yeah, and now, because she said it's the scar tissue, I'm looking for a tissue. Um, because she said it's the scar tissue, um, I thought, well, that makes sense. You know, I could live with that. As long as it doesn't get worse, I'm all right with it. Mm. Right, so here we go friends. Paul, Pat Hoskins, is she in the room? Has she found us? I don't know why I obsess about Pat. I love her. Okay, let's get started. So last week, if you recall, let's have a little recap. So for anybody that's new to the fold today and you're wondering, is there anybody here who was just surfing the net or came along to join us and is wondering what this old bat's about? Well, it's fun, okay. It's fun, it's relaxing. And yes, Pat is in the room. Good morning, Pat. Okay, so what we did, we, I'll show you. Okay, so we started with tracing paper, didn't we? And we designed, bear with me a moment, just a quick, quick, quick recap. We designed um, on tracing paper, we designed a round with a butterfly and swirls and twirls. This is the one we did live. I decided the one I'd done before was a little bit weird because the flowers were going in the wrong direction. Hello. You know what? I like it too. I've got a pair. Hey, I've got a pair, Paul. You know, we were talking about it. Here we are. Choose that up a bit. So then what we did was we traced it out. How did we get the round? Well, you know, you can draw around a cup, can't you? You can draw around a bowl. You can also, what we did, because I was thinking ahead a little bit on the bus, you can draw around this, can't you? Masks. So we've got masks. If you want different shapes in the background, we've got masks reusable with a circle and a rectangle and a hexagon and a triangle and a square and a diamond what does that say shoe dog ah oh, that was when i was on the phone to my son mark and he said this is a really good oh yeah i remember now this is a really good um documentary or is it a book autobiography and it's shoes nike it's the it's the story of Nike, Shoe Dog, it's called. Anyway, got to look it up, got to look it up. Mark said it's really quite something, especially if you're in business. So that'd be good. Anyway, I digress. So we did that. I just wondered what on earth Shoe Dog has got to do, but I just wrote it there. Okay. So then we've got this. 
Then the next step, what we have to do now is transfer it. So we took, I took this, I turned it over, I drew with a soft pencil on the back, and then I transferred it to there. See, like that. If that's the front, which it might be, then I transfer it straight away like that. Right, and I push through with a harder pencil, and I've got the image on a piece of our stencil card. Okay, piece of our stencil card. Okay. And I put it up a little bit because I thought, oh, I could make a card here. So I put it up a little bit so that I've got room for a message down the bottom. So it's just a little bit higher up. Yeah, cool. Okay, so I've done that. And your homework, if you recall, was to ink it up. Have you done that? No, it wasn't. It was to pencil it. We're going to ink it together. All right. Let's do that. We'll ink it today and then we'll colour it. And I've got a couple of tricks to show you. So let's start. What's the time? Five past, eight past. That'll do. Right. So we've got our micron pens. I'm going to use 005 and the O1s. And top tip, always have a piece of card always have a piece of card on the side to check your pens okay and what else do i need oh yeah i'm going to use this this is my groovy guard anything will do piece of paper folded You've got to lean on something so that you don't if your hands are greasy or oily or sweaty you don't want to and also paper you don't want to smear with you don't want to smear the, um, the pencil work, do you? Right, that'll do. Is that good enough? That's a one. So two ones and two oh fives here. That's a bit better. They do they do wear out eventually. They last a long time, but I mean I use them so much. Right, so let's do some inking. Are you ready? Uh, Shake, a bit of a stretch. Come on. This is our yoga for the mind. It's important. By the end of this hour, I'd much rather do this than get on the bicycle down in the log cabin. I can tell you that. Um, but what I find is <clears throat> already I'm I'm in a good space. I'm in my happy space because I already did I did the pencil work this morning. I couldn't find mine yesterday. I put it away in my pink bag. What couldn't you find, darling? And yes, Pat, weren't Paul's presentations on television great? He did so well last week on Creating Craft. Um, right, pen, let's get going. And we'll get our eye in. I won't do the outside first, I'm gonna relax. Right, here we go. Okay, are we ready? And actually, shall I come in a bit closer? Let's come in a bit closer. If you can forgive the fingernails, sorry about the fingernails, they're um, turning into Potter's hands. That's all right, though. I'm a Potter. What can I tell you? Okay. Here we go. So we'll start with the butterfly. And we'll start. See, it's going to be quite busy. So you don't have to worry too much. Just keep your eye on the road ahead. And make the artwork come to you. I find that helps a lot. So for example, I turn the paper rather than my hand. Just stay, this is my comfortable spot when I'm drawing. So I just make the artwork to me. And the lovely thing about this is when you start to build it up, okay, and if you want to stop, you stop at a join, you see, at a point, not halfway down a line. But as it builds up, we're, we're just putting the outline in. 
Don't worry if you miss the lines because we're going to do shading and all sorts of loveliness. Okay. My eyesight isn't what it used to be, I can tell you. And, um, but it is what it is. And so I've just got to go with it. When I was at the dentist the other day, um, Prue, she's got these amazing, like she's got like a like a lamp attached to her glasses. I said, you know what? I think I need a pair of them. And she said they magnify, you know, the glasses magnify uh, considerably. And I said, I wonder if you could give me the link Okay, so I could get a pair because I think they'd be brilliant for crafters. Do you know what she said? She's a, she's from New Zealand. She's a Kiwi. She said, "Well, they're about five thousand pounds. Five thousand pounds. <gasps> what? Yeah, five thousand pounds." She said, "For a for a pair of glasses with a a light there, it's dentistry ones." I said, well, pass on that then. Imagine the amount of clay you could get. £5,000. <laughs> yeah, different world. Mind you, the prices they charge, the private dentists. But she's brilliant. There you go. I bet I could get cheaper magnet. I said to her, I, you ought to let me do your shopping. I could have gotten cheaper for you. Yeah. Wacky prices. Bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Eh? I'm having a laugh. It was like that Brea moment last weekend. How much? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It is mad, isn't it? But there you go. Specialist stuff, I suppose, eh? So we're just going to take our time and ink up. I'm using the number one all the way through. So let's just get this line on, T. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, so the whole purpose of this, if you're new to this game, is to slow down, concentrate on what you're doing, and enjoy the process. Just enjoy the actual the pen, you know. You just stick with the tip of the pen and you concentrate on it. And you just stay with the pen. Whee hey! Stay with the pen. Get rid of that. Slid. That's all right. I'll make that part of the art. <laughs> I'm going to come out like that. And I'm going to go into that area. So now you'll never know. There you go. So. Right. Let's do this drop like that. It's nice to just calm down a bit. I'm still here, I'm just enjoying the process. It's so, it's such a, it's key, you know, to the whole thing. Don't worry about the end result. The end result will come. I think that's the key here. The end result will come. Just enjoy what you're doing. 
And the other thing is, all it is is a piece of paper. It's a piece of paper, you know. It's um, a piece of card. It's, it's not terminal, you know. We're not delivering babies here. We're just, if it goes wrong, all you've done is, what's wrong, you know? It's just a piece of card. There's no risk involved, is there? There's nothing at stake. When I was at Pottery last Wednesday, one of my friends there, Marion, she's really good. Like we started about the same time. She's really very, she's a perfectionist, like properly perfectionist, okay? And she has spent, I've been making this totem pole, <laughs> okay? A bit wacky. But it's cool. Actually, I'm going to put that away from it. Um, it's, it's cool. You know, I'm, it's, it's in parts and it? it's in bits. So I'm making this totem pole. And, um, and the good thing about that is it's elements. It's, it's parts, isn't it? It's, element, it's elemental, if you like. So, so I've made like six, I think I made two yesterday. So I made about eight elements so far, right? So it's growing, it's growing. It's gotta be about four foot, maybe five foot tall now. Not that it's been put together yet, it's still in bits, right? And if I don't like a piece, I'll scrap it and recycle the, the clay and make another piece, right? It's not set in stone yet. Okay, well, it never will be because it's going to be on a pole, and you just, if you don't like a bit, take it off. If you prefer the order that way around, you just move it around. This is the whole idea. It's a fun piece of artwork. That's what I thought. Anyway, but, you know. anyway Marion, all term since I came back from, so this is March when I came back, March, April, May, and then into June. Okay, she's been working on this house plaque. Really nice. Really nice house plaque, I have to say. Um, using a, a technique called scraffito, which is uh, when you scratch out a design. So you, you cover the, the clay in a slip, right? And then you scratch out a picture. So I could do this in scraffito, right? If I wanted to, it's not my sort. It wouldn't, it's, it's for paper craft, it's lovely. I like it, but I wouldn't particularly want to put this on on clay, I'm a bit grungier than that nowadays. Anyway, so Marion, she's been going, and she 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 designed, she drew this horse, okay? So a horse's head is like Colt's farm or something like that is where, you know. So she's done the letters all perfect. She's done this horse's head over here. Did it all in scraffito, like major task, okay? Um, that's all she's done. And then on Wednesday, because it's always the same tribe around the table, we gather together, same group of ladies, okay? And, um, and she went to move it, to put it in the, um, like in, on the drying rack, and it snapped. Just down the middle. Oh, I know, I know. And not repairable, irre irreparably damaged. Because that's the thing, before it goes into the kiln, it gets what we call bone dry, bone dry. And when it's bone dry, it's at its most brittle, at its most vulnerable. And clearly, I don't know, I wasn't watching what happened. All I, all I heard was the <gasps> sharp intake of breath, you know, and then the rest of us just, what can you say, you know? She was ever so good. I thought her reaction was amazing. I think I wouldn't, I don't, well, I don't know. Maybe I would have been as philosophical as she was. I think the language might have been a bit more choice if it had been me. Um, but uh, yeah. And, and her, her you know, after about five minutes of looking at it, trying to figure out whether it was salvageable, she just says, right, 
I'm going to have to start again. Oh, God, bloody hell. <laughs> I don't know if I would. And, um, you know, the teacher came and said, what about doing some kintsugi? You know, when you, you take gold, like the Japanese technique, where you take gold and you repair it? And I thought, the little I know of Marion, that is not her, that's not her style. She's a perfectionist. She doesn't want to have a house plaque that's got a great big crack through it that's been patched out with gold. You know, every time the poser would go, she'd be saying, um, this is a Japanese technique. <laughs> it's not that, the, you know, never going to happen. It's either immaculate or it's not going on the wall. That's how I know Marion. And um, so she's going to start again. Me personally, I'd just order one online. I'd say, right, that was not meant to be. I'm not going to start, go from scratch, literally with Scrafito. I'm not going to start from scratch. So, um, and if I did, I wouldn't do, she said, well, I've done the horse once, so it'd be really quick now. I thought, quick, let's define quick. But anyway, each their own. I felt so uncomfortable for her, you know. And we get frustrated if we stamp up an image wrong, you know, <laughs> or badly, or it's all relative, isn't it? Eh? Poor thing. But there you go. No one was, no one was injured. No one was hurt. No one got ill. It just did that. Mm. Lessons learned, eh? We've all been there, haven't we? So yesterday, Jilly came around for the afternoon and the evening. I made a really nice lunch. Salmon and mangoes. That was really lovely. So Tina, Tina Cox, our friend Tina, well, she's my dear friend Tina, right? So, okay, so she knows, obviously she's Indian, so she knows where to get amazing mangoes, and they're called Kesar. Am I repeating myself? Have I told you this already? They're called Kesar mangoes. The end of the season, then, pretty much. They're getting really ripe. Right, they're overripe almost. Kessar mangoes. You buy them online. You buy a box of six, buy a box of 12. I've been buying boxes of 12. I've got mangoes coming out of my ears. <laughs> I love mangoes. Okay. Mangoes, mango chutney, mango smoothies, mango ice cream, mango, 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 mango. It's just mango. It's good for you. Anyway, so mango it is. Kessar. Look it up. So, Tina gave me this really good recipe, which is really easy, okay? And it's mango chopped up. And these Kessar mangoes are really super ripe, okay? Um, and then you take a red onion. But I've got a concentrate. On. So you mango, right, chop, 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 in a bowl. Two mangoes make a really good for a family of four. Two mangoes, a red onion, finely chopped up in the bowl. Then um, juice of a lemon, half a lemon. You can try. You don't want to make it too lemony, otherwise you lose the taste of the mango, right? Half a lemon. About that much of a red chilli gives it a bit of zing. If you don't like chilies, then leave it out. Leave it out, right? Chilies. Uh, sprinkle of salt, a little bit of salts. Um, coriander, chopped up. Throw that in. Mix it up. Spread it on the salmon like salmon fillet that i'd sort of uh, tossed in butter you know just fried really absolutely gorgeous with new potatoes it's good wasn't it jilly i don't know if jilly's in the building anyway dave they loved it oh and i put i did asparagus as well so i do like <clears throat> i do like asparagus anyway so it was a very nice meal we did that and then we went out in the garage jilly and i and we um and we started doing some pottery together. It was great. Now, let's have a look. Before we carry on, let's, before I carry on waffling, 
let's have a look at one that I've already roughed up to show you. Now I want to show you, let's get a little bit more detail on the Le Papillon. Right? Okay, so this is just here. I want to show you this pattern here. So what I've done is, if we take the butterfly, let me just show, I'll do it in large so you can see it really well. So that's the butterfly, and this is the area that we're doing, okay? Let's go like that, like that, like that, like that. Okay, so you've got a rough idea. Right, so we're going to break up the, the area. And then what, what I've done is I go, right, you ready? I go out and then halfway up. Then I come down again and then halfway down and then up and halfway up and then down and halfway down and up so what you're doing is this is in large obviously up and then down and then halfway down so it's a it's a pattern right but when you do it tight right now I'm going to concentrate on what I'm doing right so you go halfway up and then now you're going in tight down See, and once you get in tight, your O1's too, too large. The enter, O5. Okay. O5 is thinner. So, no, I've got it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, now I've got more space. So, I've done that one. So, I'm going to come in, up, and up. And so, it's a thinner pen. See? Down. And it looks really nice when you do it, okay? Tight. So you've got the pattern now. Up and up, down and down. Up and up, or you can go halfway, all the way up, whichever works your boat, whichever. But when you do it, look, see how nice it looks when it's done completely. So let's get this going now. I might go quiet now because I've got to concentrate. Small pen. And we didn't do this um, in pencil because uh, it's too fizz it's too fussy, right? Okay, let's do this this bit here. Start here, right? So it's right. Nice, and it's again. It's not critical because it's come down a bit further, Gray. Um, Because it's so tiny and it's quite a busy design. Oh, I know what I wanted to show. So I've got this at the Hoover Castle. I bought this amazing, we bought with my card. <laughs> <laughs> we bought this phenomenal piece of artwork. Oh, I didn't bring it to show you. Can I run in the house to get it? What do you think? Or shall it wait? It's beads. It's beaded artwork. You know when you you see something and it's so immaculate, it takes your breath away. Well, this took my breath away. I was so stunned, and Dave was, especially when we found out how it's, what it symbolizes or what it signifies. It was quite something. I wish I'd brought it in. It would take me about two minutes to dash and get it. What do I do? Do I dash for it and lose all my friends? Because they all click away. There you go. There. I would have loved to see it. I used to do beadwork. Go get it, please. Right. Are you gonna are you gonna still be here when I get back? Because if I get back and you've all cleared off, I should be well unimpressed. <laughs> Two minutes, right? Time me. I'm going for it. I don't know whether the microphone will work. Right, you ready? Okay.
I don't know if the microphone will work into the house. We will, we're about to find out. I don't think two minutes maximum. Right. Okay. Please make where I can find them. <laughs> Who's still here? They're all still here. Ah, oh, I love you. <laughs> okay. Right. Beadwork. I want to see this? There you go, look at that. Right, how's that? Okay, now you wanna hear the most impressive part of this. This is Morse code. This is Morse code. So the lady, what she does is, I've also got the, I've got the deciphering, like the code, okay? And this actually in Morse code, is the serenity prayer. There you go. It's a no-brainer for me. I live my life by the serenity prayer. Uh, one day at a time. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? There you go. <laughs> I know. Fantastic, isn't it? See if you can... Look. See how rich that is. Isn't that just stunning? Let's see, see if I can give the lady a shout out, the artist. Here we go. Cressida Mason Hornby, Morse Code Serenity Prayer, April 2023. Cressida Mason Hornby. There you go. So if you wanted to look her up, Cressida, here, let me just do this because you may want to just look at her beautiful work. Cressida, at readandmason.co.uk. Okay, take, take a screen grab. It's a big shout out. Burton in Kendall, Cumbria. She was such a lovely woman. And was it was it expensive? Oh, yeah. But I don't think you put a price on this. And when she said, it was so interesting, because she had a wall full of them, right? And, and I, right in the back corner, this was the one. Oh, it's the Teals girls, isn't it? Look, my colours, right? And right in, the, right in the far corner, I said, that one behind you that I can't reach because it's so far away, um, uh, how much is that one? Or what does that one say? I said, I didn't ask how much it was. I said, how, what does that one say? She said, that's the serenity prayer. Ding! Yeah, I said, well, there you go then. And I got my purse out. Yeah, isn't that fantastic? There you go. <sighs> Right, so back to what we do. Are you suitably impressed? Because I certainly was. I was blown away by that. Right, so we've done our, our pattern here, okay? And we could, do, we could do more along here. Let's see what we can, let's have a look here. We're gonna do the same here as well. And it gets tinier, 005. I think the thing about, but this one, let me see, I wonder if I can get away with it. Yeah, we can do it again. Um, I think the thing about going to these, I'm, I'm comfortable enough with my own skill level. I don't, I don't feel intimidated by brilliant art, you know, not at all. 
it's like um i'm glad to see such talent it it, it makes my heart sing when i see beautiful work like that it's just glorious there's no other word for it do you, do you know what i mean it's just glorious and i don't think to myself oh i'd like to copy that i just think what a fantastic what a fantastic skill set you know and what was interesting was dave farmer dave when we walked the entire show right and we were standing outside the castle and i said right dave because at that point we hadn't bought anything we were going to go and have a coffee and i said best did show for me personally the beads the bead lady i said because we'd already i didn't buy straight away i walked around first did the, did the, the work the walk you know around all the stalls and the tents and that and then um, I said, for me, the bead lady. And I fully expected him to say, oh, for me, the marker tree, the wood, you know. And he went, I agree, the beads has got it for me too. So I said, well, if we go back, we've got to make a commitment, Dave. We can't go back and stare at him again. We're going to buy one. He said, yeah, come on then. And that's what we did. And I can't tell you how chuffed I am. How excited. Every time I look at that, I think, oh, I'm so glad I got it. I'm so glad I got it. You know, that's a, well, it's a lot of money. You know, it was, it was a fair amount of money. But you can't put a price on it, can you? It's art. It's art. So there you go. So now we've done that. And what I want to show you now, right, because we're artists. Don't ever think you're not an artist, you know. Don't ever think you're not an artist because you can't do that. And that's what I'm saying about these artists that are supreme. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And it's it's a skill, isn't it? It's a craft. That's a craft. Can you hear the cat? That's a real, real skill set. Okay. We're skilled too. We're skilled too. Just differently. Okay. Your artwork is your artwork. My artwork is my artwork. Cressida's artwork is her artwork. So, you know, you gotta you gotta embrace what you do. I tell you what we have to do is go around the outside. Okay. Right back to the one. I'm gonna go with the one on that one. The one. And are we going freehand or are we gonna use a mask? I'm gonna go freehand. I'm gonna push the boat out. Right, now let's have a look. Get your eye in, Barbara. And we're gonna go right to there. From there to there. Right, one sweep. Here we go. Okay, that'll do. If I go quiet, it's because it's it's one sweep. Okay. That'll do. Here we go. So you just keep your eye on the road ahead when you do this. And concentrate on what you're doing. And what I find is, and it was funny because when I spoke to Cressida about what she was doing, she said, well, it keeps me out of trouble, the beadwork, especially because it's all Morse code, okay? She's got to concentrate on what she's doing. Imagine that. Dot, dot, dash, dash, dot. There we go. So it was it was quite something to, um, to see that. Oh, tell me. There you go. There we go. That'll do. Good enough. Okay. How are you doing? Are you working with me? Are you doing this too? Yeah. So, tracing, design, transfer, pencil, ink. And now we're going to do some colouring. Okay. Good news is, very good news. Can you hear that cat? Have a look at that while I get it back. It won't stop whinging now. Oh, come on. Which one are you? Hello? Where are you then? Well, come on. Do you want to come in or do you want to come? What's up, mate? Oh, it's Eric. 
Do you want to say hello to our friends? Come on then. Eric's had a bit of a fight this weekend, so he's a bit spooked, aren't you, mate? Hey? Come and say hello. Hmm? Huh? Hey? Come and say hello. Go on, look, they're up there, look. <laughs> I know. He just likes to be in the same room. Okay, now, so the great news is that finally, Dave picked these up on Friday from the mold makers. Hallelujah. Okay, blending pens. Here they are. We've been waiting for these. I can't tell you. A couple of years now, two years for these pens. And so at long last, they're back in stock. We've We've had so many, we've run out, because per Pergamano Holland let us down so badly, we've had to literally rein reinvent, start from scratch with the tool making. And so over the past two years, slowly we've been running out of different tools. The blending tool, um, that was a big blow for me. And so we were starting from scratch, and then I said, well, if we're going to start from scratch, then let's, let's improve the situation. So everything new going forward, is, is the packaging, we're going green if you like, okay, keeping it simple, because the prices have all gone through the roof, so we're trying to keep the prices down as well. And But what we have done is, you'll see that everything, whether it's a needle tool or a nib or a, they've, everything is gonna have a, or a ball tool, will have a cap now, only because it protects your, it protects everything. Okay, so these are back in, woohoo, Right, well done, Dave. And now we're going to start rolling them out. Yeah, so what's up, mate? So the blending tool is back in track. I'm going to show you how they work. And then here we go. So next up after this is going to be the one needle tool, the one needle tool being a perforating tool, um, calligraphy mapping pens. They were out. Then we've got these ones, the shaders. So so you will see them now start to roll out. And we've done an initial run of a thousand of these just because we've got so many gaps in the in the in the stock in the different products that we decided we'd do a thousand of these, thousand of those, thousand of those, do a mini run of everything, and then go back to the beginning and start again. So if you want to get in on the first run of a thousand, then order them now. Okay. I'm going to take them on telly with me on Thursday as well because um, these are so good. I want to show you how they work. Okay, in case you don't know how they work. I'm going to show you. And if you're going online to get them, if you want to do this, then these, these, it's worth having dorso oil as well. Okay, so let's just have a look. And we'll, I'll show you on a piece of scrap first, but I already did a little bit here just to, to see. I wanted, I asked myself a couple of questions because usually this is done with, um, on card, obviously, it's the, it's the same card, right? Usually, um, when we use the blending pens and the dorso oil, we usually work on um, on parchment, pergamano parchment. But it works beautifully on card as well. All right, love. What do you want? <laughs> it works beautifully on card as well. So, say for example, we're the aqua pencils, the aqua pencils are obviously water-based, and then the B pencils, these ones, don't jump up there, Eric. Don't jump up there, that's not smart. <laughs> then these pencils, they they can be moved with the dorsal oil. So we know that on parchment, but I want to show you how it works on um on paper, on card as well, okay? So let's have a look at this. If, for example, I've got choices now, so I could take my little spot on sponge. Many of you have seen us do this before on telly, but normally we work towards, so we put a bit of the dorso oil on there, right? So paper artists, paper, not parchment artists, but card and paper artists often, they use polychromos with oil, 
Faber Castell has their own oil. It's exactly the same as the Dorso oil, okay? Some oils stain the card, some don't. This one doesn't, bonus. Right, so let's have a look. And what we're gonna do, for example, we've put a bit on there, and then we're going to, um, let's take this one. This is, this is the much coveted pen that we've been waiting for. Right, now let's have a look. I've got my, my nibs, so I've always had a stash of nibs. So I'll take my nibs, you get, let's, on this auspicious occasion, let's get a clean one because I want to use a couple of different colours. So I'm going to use one for, there you go, I've got two clean ones. Right. And now, so I, I use my nibs. You see, this is the point I'm making, is when you see, if you see nibs in a pack, like 10 in a pack, grab a pack of 10 and then you can store them you see, and you can have some for green, some for red, some for black, just, they last ages. I just want to show you with a new one how they work. So I'm going to pop that in there. Now let's take, for example, oh, what is that cat doing? <laughs> oh, right, let's have a look, I'll show you. Let's take, for example, the B pencil here. Yeah, I know that. What's up? Where are you? Oh, you want to come up now? No, I'm colouring. <laughs> right, so you put it, let's put a little bit in there like that, right, just lightly. Add a bit in there. Let's put a little bit in there as well. See, the reason that I'm doing this on here rather than on my flowers is because I want to show you first. Okay, so do that. Oh, cat. Right, so now I'll take my, look, and I'll just put a little bit on. You can see, it's getting tighter. I don't want to go backwards and over the cat's tail. Right, you see that better now? It's going a bit tighter. Okay, now watch the difference when I hit it with oil. If I did, these are the B pencils. So these are the wax oily based pencils. So they respond to this. Now, if I go in with this, you'll see, Keep my, look at the difference, look. See how it changes. If you go in with a bit of oil, it completely transforms the color. Look, see how it changes it. Now, if I go in like there, I'll get a bit more oil in, and then I'll just start pulling it through. There you go. So you can really see how that changes. And you just drag the, okay. So we did this, I'm gonna show you a couple of little tricks. So we did this on, on dry, didn't we? All right, so we just pull that through. Oh, you did get up there, you monkey. <laughs> He's in front of the camera. Where are you now? So you can see we've done that on dry, like that. So I can cover that up now, just to show you. You can see. So in the meantime, while that's drying, let me take you into this area. And you know, like when we're doing watercolor, we add um, what we call a glaze, don't we? Do you know? It's always a good idea to keep the nib facing the, the line art. There you go. Right, so now that's coloured in with the oil before I add the, the, pa the, the pencil. So let's try now what happens, see if it blends more easily. If we add a little bit, probably want to let it dry a little bit before we do this, but we'll give it a go anyway. I just want to show you the difference when you blend. Now we're blending with oil, okay, but you can dry blend as well. Cat, if you're not that camera over, you're in trouble. Right, now let's have a look. If we go in there, you'll see when you do this, you'll see that it, it moves because we've already put down a base on here. If you could see this cat now, Talk about wanting attention. 
Right, see, so you bring it in. You see how you can move it in now? Look, and you can bring it in to make, like for flowers as well. So what we're doing now is we're bringing in the veins. You see? You can bring it in like that. So what I'm trying to say is that if you put an, a layer down of the oil before you put the colour in, it really makes a difference. And if you let it dry before you go in with the next layer. So, for example, if I wanted to go in with a black over the top of this. So just put a little tiny bit of black in there now for shade. I want to do it on here. Oh, that cat. Right, let's get the black one going. I've already got a black one somewhere, so I don't want to. That'll do. There's a black one. Right, so I can just add a little bit of depth in there now. And you'll see. See how it just. Just add a bit of black in the centre as well, just on that side. But it doesn't. The point is that the line art, the black line art, doesn't move with the oil. That's good to know. And secondly, the pencil doesn't smear either. Now, another thing that's good to know, let's just pretend now that we want to put some shading in. See how I've done the shading here? Right, so let's take the shading. Oh, no, not on my best. No, no. Let's just get a bit of... Right. See, what you've got to see as well is that the oil, it's, it permeates. It goes through the paper, okay? So let's have a look now. I've made a kind of a chisel side. Let's pretend that this is the bottom now. Oh, cat, you really are irritating, aren't you? <clears throat> Don't do that. <laughs> Shame you can't see him. He's sitting on the window ledge now. Right, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna go in here and let's just pretend this is the underneath. So we often, we do this, don't we? And we want to make a drop shadow. Okay, so around we go. I'm using the polychromos, which is the same as the B pencil. This is that warm beige that we, boring beige, I always call it. Right, so, so we're going to go in there like that. You know how we put the shadow on there. But then often we want to bleed it out, don't we? And then we have to do like light feathery strokes to yeah, and often I know that you you struggle, some of you struggle getting that lovely graduated shaded effect. Are you with me? Right, let's take this. See if it's clean. That'll do. Right, hold it into the actual line. Okay, and then just run along that line like this just take the tip and run where you went there right and then you just you you'll be surprised how lovely this looks and when you do this the the oil evaporates so whilst at the moment you think well hang on there's a big mark there no 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 this will all disappear all you're doing now is just moving this oh, here we go just breaking up that shadow. It it looks so good when the when the shadow when it evaporates, it will look so good. And when it's dry, you can go in. You can also what's this? An HB? Let's use an HB pencil. I want to show you this as well. If you wanted to get some sh a sh sharp shadow like black, there you go. So now you're going to go in there. It looks a bit like someone's just run a pencil along the edge. Take that, just hold that in there and then just move it and you'll see, you just literally you can move it around. Just go for it. And when it dries out, you get the most beautiful drop shadows, okay? So that one's already dried out, you see on that side. But you get it, don't you? So that's how that works. Right, now we've done the experimenting, we know how it works. And then of course, when it's dry, if you wanted to, you can even take, like if I take, let me see if I've got, a, see if I've got something here. Where's that one I had earlier? Mm. Oh, there's a green. Okay, let's just grab a green. This is from months ago. Can't remember the last time I used this. It'll be a green or a gray or something. All right, take that out there. Pop that green in there. 
and let's add a little bit of so that the oil releases the green or the yellow or whatever it is and let's see as soon as look even though this was from months ago it releases the color see it's coming through there you go so fantastic for blending there you go look at that so you don't even have to you just use the nib that's why i'm saying get a set of nibs and then you've got one for yellow one for green one for blue and you can use them literally reinvigorate and join like that that lovely so if you want this to be yellow no sight of a yellow pen in just the blending pen just what was what was left on the pen the last time i did it so i just want to show you these different tricks before we go to the actual nice huh so there you go that's that oh it's very addictive though i'll tell you that as well so layers all layers and it's a good idea as i've just shown you to to reserve a nib for yellow a nib for blue a nib for yeah there you go in goes the depth again pretty special eh right so we've done the we've done the the artwork if you like now there and what we're going to do now is color in our our picture and we can even if we just start with the butterfly if we just start with a bit that we did there okay let's just do this and we're going to go we'll put some blue in there and some blue in there let's just do a little bit so you see because this is going to move it around right you can get shadow going there and the other thing is and then i'll finish on this because i know that you're gonna you're gonna have some fun doing this it the blending pens this is why they well why they sold out and they were hugely popular and then we, like i said we couldn't get hold of them but you'll see um they work amazingly and the other thing is with the mix mats right you get an oil one and you get a water one they're the same thing right they're the same what we just give you that if you wanted to you can you can deposit the color here right let me just explain you can actually paint from here so you can pop a little drop of oil on there like that i'm just saying that this works too and then you can take your pen and soak up some of the oil and it will obviously it will dilute like that i'm going to do this on here though right so you can see it and then you can so you've got your oil and you've got your blue and you've got your, your mat there and then you can you see so you can use it for larger areas look how it if you want a lighter less intense color see how you can move it around so you can use your blue there and then use your nibs look a completely different look just bring it in like that and again you can use it as a not that lovely let it dry apply the next layer there you go different eh completely different so you can use the pencils directly you can use the nibs and dilute like a paint like a paintbrush like an applicator the reason we came up with these years ago uh, and then I'll, I'll finish on this was there used to be something by ranger called cut and dry and they were like like paper they looked like look like this but they were longer and then they discontinued them <clears throat> and so people in, in this world they were just like breathed because it was like well where are we going to go how do you blend these pencils now that we don't have a nib? So we'd just acquired Pergamano and we said, well, hang on a minute. We've got the handles, but well, we had the handles then. Um, let's let's just develop the nibs. Let's get the nibs going. And so that's what we did. And so that's now you know the rest of the story. Okay, so I've got my nice blue in there. 
and I've moved it around. So instead of having to color in fastidiously with the pencils, I just take the nib and just move the blend around. See? And when I turn it over, you start to see the oil already coming through. So the thing about, the one thing you do need to know is you can't do this on the front of a folded, oh, hello. You can't do this on, on a folded card. You certainly do need to um, layer up, you see? So you could just get your, your depth in there, there, and then go again. So I hope that that's been helpful. And I really look forward to seeing, I've got so much going on this week. I'll finish on this note. <clears throat> I'm not gonna be able to get to this um, artwork this week. So let me just tell you what's happening at Clarity this week. On uh, tomorrow, Paul's got, um, he's got uh, Groovy Tuesday, of course. And then on Thursday at three o'clock and seven o'clock, I'm on telly up at Create and Craft with um, the Shack Shack. There you go. So let me tell you that. Um, that's three o'clock and seven o'clock in the evening on Thursday. And then on Friday, this is pretty cool. On Friday, I've got a, another smashing show at nine o'clock and one o'clock. So nine o'clock in the morning and one o'clock, I should be on Create and Craft. I've got some really good sort of mixed media stuff. I can, you can trust that I will, if we've still got some left, we'll have these on the show as well. Um, there you go. And um, and I should be demonstrating how to use these on TV. So I've got to do the prep yet, though, which is um, which is why I was spiraling earlier on. But this is going to be really nice. And I'd really like to do a bit more on this because we've got to stop, haven't we? You know, I could get into this. I could spend another hour doing this. But I know that we've got to get on with our work because <clears throat> we've got the TV shows to prepare. But I really like doing this. It's, it's really fun. Maybe I'll come in this evening and do a bit more. If anybody's around, I don't know. And then you see the dots. This was the other thing that I wanted to finish on was I, I added the dots in the background, which I really like the look of. Okay, so I'm going to colour this in, and then I'm going to add the dots, friends. But I, I like that, don't you? I think that looks nice. Nice finishing trick. So there you go. I'm, I'm, going, to, um, I'm going to call it a day now. I'm going to just get this pen work going, and I'll show you. I'll tell you what I do want to do is just show you I've got to show you, if we do this side here, let's just do, I feel like we haven't done any colouring in. All right, let's have a look. Okay. So I want it darker there, don't I? So I'm going to go in there like that. Yeah. And I'll take my blue... Just to repeat myself, I'm going to take my dorsal oil, I'm going to go in with the tip towards the line like that and then start pulling out and you'll see how it changes from gritty to really smooth and beautiful, see? And then you can drag it round and shade with it. Look at that. How easy is that? Okay. There you go. So I'm going to call that a day because it's already eleven part. It's five past eleven, and um, I hope that that helped with the um, with the trial. I didn't want to go straight to the canvas. I wanted to make sure that we know what we're doing before we do that. I think you agree with me, don't you? Now, don't forget on um, on Thursday. Three o'clock, I think it is, Paul, and seven o'clock on Create and Craft, that's me, and then nine o'clock on one o'clock. It's a mixed media kind of thing, which is our stuff, isn't it? And the three o'clock and the seven o'clock is the Shack Show. 
so you'll recognize the artwork tune in and see if you if you remember it all right lots of love to you i hope that everything is uh, good paul thank you so much for your help and next monday is a bank holiday so i won't see you then but i will be back with you the following monday okay not next monday the following monday lots of love take care i don't think i've forgotten anything um but if i did um do some coloring tomorrow tonight maybe i'll come up and do a bit see how i feel um i'll just come on facebook if you see me pop in and say hello all right lots of love take care bye bye now now where did i put that thing again that i switch off with? oh it's chaos lots of love where's the cat gone always oh, up on the windowsill bye bye <laughs> oh dear